everyone. I'm April Bean, and welcome to our live recording of the Totally Adequate podcast produced by Quest Analytics. We initiate thoughtful conversations around the latest news, policies, and innovations from inside the complex world of provider network management. Our goal is to elevate the health of communities across the nation through superior network management, and we seek to introduce you, our listeners, to innovative and inspirational folks that are helping to craft the future of care. Okay, today is part one of a two-part series focused on the complexities and challenges of building differentiated networks that improve access to quality care for members, outcomes, and operations. It's finding that sweet spot between broad networks and narrow networks where everyone's goals from members, regulators, and payers, and everyone in between can be achieved. Okay, we're joining a conversation with two healthcare IT executives who have spent decades innovating solutions designed to improve the performance of access and performance of provider networks. But they never saw the full view of possibilities before coming to Quest Analytics. So please welcome Subhash Silam, SVP of Applied Network Analytics, and Steve Levin, CEO, both of Quest Analytics. Thank you, April. Uh, good to see you, Subhash. Good morning, everybody. Hope all is well. Uh, this is sort of our first podcast. We're, we're, we're kind of getting excited by the new medium. Uh, let's let's talk network, Subhash, and sort of the world we came out of and the world we're entering. Um, who knew it was so exciting? So, um, Subhash, the first question for you is going to be sort of like, like, where have you come from? But as opposed to making you uh, go first, I- I'll give you my story. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm a reformed consultant. I spent uh, 20 years or so uh, uh at a management consulting firm, I did everything from uh, aluminum to life insurance. Ended up in, man, I ended up in healthcare only because one of my clients got themselves in trouble um, and they needed a quick downsizing. So my introduction to healthcare was sort of trying to, you know, cut costs and keep a company you know, afloat. Um, but I spent, uh, uh, I got into revenue cycle out of that client. Uh, ended up doing a bunch of work in the financial kind of plumbing between payers and providers. Um, then I, I I left and I started a company in the rev cycle predictive analytics space. Uh, early, early, early uh, stuff around predictive analytics and sort of workflow optimization. Fascinating world. I, I spent all my time thinking about sort of the win-lose between payers and providers. Um, that was a, a, a fun experience. And then uh, about three or four years ago, the folks at Quest called. And I took this job and um, who knew the network was so interesting and complicated? Um, so I've been in now three years um, and I'm very excited for your addition because I think that uh, it represents sort of the next chapter for Quest. But that's my story. Uh, what's your story? Yeah, thanks for the background, uh, Steve, and thanks for having me on the show. <clears throat> you have pretty diverse uh, background. I stayed in healthcare throughout my, my career and in my journey through healthcare, I've navigated a uh, diverse landscape of challenges and opportunities like, like you did. And in each shape, uh, my perspective in profound ways, I should say. Uh, prior to joining Quest, I spent uh, 12 years at Optum. Uh, it's a services business of United Health Group. And within this tenure, I served uh, in a variety of roles, each offering uh, pretty unique insights for me. And from building health analytics team for the revenue cycle unit of Optum to leading product development. And most recently, I ran the advanced analytics and critical insights group. Um, here in the, in the complex world of healthcare providers and payers, uh, I dive deep into data, creating stories that could drive real change and make a difference. That's kind of uh, the common thread across all uh, of my career in Optum. And before joining Optum, I was part of uh, another healthcare data organization, now integrated into uh, IQDIA. And over the course of seven years there, I engaged in diverse roles, initially focused on curating provider directories of uh, various healthcare entities, such as short-term acute care hospitals, long-term acute care hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, group purchasing organizations, integrated delivery networks, and so on and so forth. So. And subsequently, um, I transitioned into consulting, very close to what you've done, I guess, uh, where I leveraged uh, prescription data to provide strategic guidance to pharmaceutical industry. Uh, here, I focused on drug regimen tracking, exploratory patterns of 
persistent medication usage and addressing associated challenges. So reflecting on my journey, I'm actually humbled by the depth and breadth of experiences um, garnered over the past two decades within the within the domain. Uh, so yeah, the thing I'm thinking about, I, I remember this now. I reminded you and I basically were both in the rev cycle spot. Of, you know, you were in sort of um, clinical authorization and sort of one of those uh, uh, um, early applications of of analytics to kind of optimize you know revenue and billing effectively. Same era when I was thinking about copays and deductibles and and denials. Um, uh, and so. You, in many ways, you and I have this shared sort of uh, experience, which is transactional. Like one of my big things when I came to to Quest and I started under thinking about networks is um, how 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 much they were ref- they're sort of aside. They're like on the side from this transactional uh, kind of world of healthcare. Like like I spent you know you know unfor- many decades uh too many decades i'm I'm an old guy um thinking about the the kind of the the event right the encounter the patient comes in or they're seen and there's a bill generated like bill generated and it gets submitted and it gets denied or paid or underpaid or overpaid and like in that transactional kind of view if I listen to you, you spent a lot of time in that space as well, but then you said things like is this provider, high quality provider, are they are they efficient and effective? These are all like the unit unit kind of elements, right? They're unitary. Yeah. I mean, one of my big things when I came to Quest was sort of this learning journey. And it took me a long time. I was the network for me was not like an obvious thing, but like what I was struck by was how underappreciated and sort of how um ex- sort of you know assumed the network was there was this whole part of the business that i never understood which was not transactional but it was like setting up the board game mm-hmm. right it was the thing it, like you set up the board game and then all that stuff i spent time on was sort of operating on the board game yeah 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 I mean, um, that whole transaction piece you you mentioned, right? I was actually recently at a reference place who unfortunately had gone through some stand placement because of his health and all. And, and it's fascinating as, as I was listening to his story, like how he moved from AR to an observation setting to an inpatient setting and then got discharged and why am I getting so many details and blah, blah, blah on this thing. Like, I mean, it's hard for anybody to really understand, like, why are they getting so many pains and all that? Then, um, it's fascinating. We both you and I like to a little behind the curtain and see how the whole transaction goes, like to connect the dots and explain to that. I thought that was an interesting experience for me. Right. What? So, um, the, let me let me. The, the, my question to you is sort of okay. So now now you're in the quest world, um, and you're and you're trying to think about all the stuff you knew, and now apply it in the world of networks. Um, you know. You know, what were you thinking about before? And then what do you think about now? Like, like, what were the sorts of problems that you saw? We'll, we'll just focus on sort of your, your time at Optum because it's the most recent. Like, like, what were the things at Optum that you were really focused against? Yeah, so um, if I were to summarize my focus on the past decade at Optum, it primarily revolved around driving down the healthcare expenditures through enhancements in operational efficiencies um, within the care delivery ecosystem. Uh, essentially, it, it is centered on harnessing data to address critical questions, such as, like you mentioned, like appropriateness of care setting and level of care, assisting clinicians uh, make medical necessity decisions, and leveraging natural language processing to, to translate. Uh, medical record into a codified protocol. Um, right. So those kind of things. And um, yeah, I spent, um, I mean, identifying and rectifying, helping rectify clinical care variation areas and evaluating provider performance measures. So those are some very broad areas that I, I touched on. All, all these things about like, you know, the flow, sort of the utilization management, the the kind of the, 
managing the flow of, you know, members and providers and thinking about how to, you know, deliver effectively higher value care, right? So great outcomes, but sort of do it more efficiently and effectively. So, so, and, and, you know, for years I spent time thinking about sort of who has to pay what to whom and, and, and why did someone get shorted? Um, when you come to quest, like all of that is like on top of the thing that we focus on, like my, 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 uh, you know, big takeaway was, boy, this network thing, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I, I had no idea about the, the, the complexity, the sophistication, um, the, the kind of dynamics of it all. So, um, and how, you know, you know, effectively good networks can make all that other flow stuff better and bad networks can make all that flow stuff harder. So like, what, what have you been, you know, you've been now here for 90 days. What are sort of, sort of your, you know, your key takeaways in the 90 day, you know, box? I mean, um, uh, one of the important realizations I've actually encountered um, after coming to Quest Analytics uh, pertains to the, the pervasive challenge of selection within the realm of health insurance uh, across various insurance sectors, be it like home, life, pet insurance, whatever insurance you take, the issue of selection is at large, right? I mean, however, um, its impact is practically pronounced uh, in the domain of Health, health insurance. So consider a scenario of um, health plan entering in a new market and, and typically the initial way of enroll is comprised of like individuals with pre-existing health conditions um, requiring immediate care and then driving up premiums, right? So um, consequently, the uh, attracting the balanced mix of healthy individuals becomes an increasingly challenging uh, because of high premiums. Um, increasing selection dilemma. So, I mean, economists call this the adverse selection problem where the pool is disproportionately populated by individuals who go the higher risk uh, profiles and higher costs thereby. And uh, the, the 2010 Affordable Care Act introduced uh, the health insurance mo- uh, mandate as a fundamental measure to tackle some of these problems. But it's essential to recognize that managing risk within the enrolled population is incumbent upon the health plan. And just possessing uh, excellent driving skills, as an example, isn't sufficient without uh, a vehicle equipped with adequate safety features to avoid an accident related. Right. And so effective risk management requires uh, the presence of appropriate health care providers uh, within the network. So my, my most striking um, revelation um, has been uh, the lack of sophistication in the network design process. Considering its pivotal role in managing population risk and addressing the healthcare needs of uh, communities across America. So, surprising um, that despite its critical significance, the level of sophistication and provider selection uh, remains disproportionately low. I mean, we, we estimated like Medicare Advantage spends like 12 to $15 billion a year um, on unnecessary administrative costs attributable to poorly designed uh, networks. So, that's the yeah. default. I'm- I hear that, and then I and I shudder because Quest is at the forefront of this network management problem, and so the sophistication is an interesting industry thing, and it's partly our fault. Um, <laughs> so you know, this sort of like the it's humbling at how, um, you know, it's not that it's it's just hard. The thing that I'm struck by in in network management is how hard it is, because, you know, when I started here um i didn't even think like like i presumed that the data was easy to come by Mm. i i started with the oh it's just you know providers office location and a phone number but like who knew that that um that was sort of a constantly moving sort of it wasn't static you know i think then like two percent of the of the kind of work information changes every month like so they, they, the office relocates, the doctor leaves, the new doctor joins, the doctor gets a new cell phone, like merges, like all this dynamics of like, I had no appreciation that sort of, that these fundamental content items were kind of, it was like slippery sliding. I use the word drift, 
Mm-hmm. It's so that's why it's so exciting for me at the moment, which is kind of because of the the complexity and because of what I believe the future is going to require in terms of network sophistication, the opportunity for really kind of breakthrough gains uh, presents itself. Uh, and and um, if you, you know, before I, I give you my, my little short list, if, if you were to think about the three or four things in network design, so the creation, construction of networks, which I think is what you're talking about, what what are you excited by about the, about like the next kind of generation, whether it's your quest or sort of industry wide? What is it that you're thinking about? I mean, um, see, the primary focus, as I mentioned, about the sophistication, lack of sophistication um, in the network. Go gentle on the lack of sophistication. Lots of our clients are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, see. The, Again, it's not on any single entity or individual here, right? I mean, the, the challenge is about data and analytics, right? System, right? So it's it's not to kind of like um, say that there is not effort enough effort to do that. Um, one, maybe I think I'm sure players acknowledge that, but what do they do about it? I think that's a, that's a challenge, right? Um, and. Uh, and our, our primary focus revolves around enhancing the sophistication of this uh, configuration process, right? Our aim is to develop um, develop that uh, tools to facilitate the uh, evaluation and optimization of, of network, um, ensuring the alignment with the overarching business objective of the health plan, and um, crucially, devising robust measures, uh, mechanisms to gauge their efficacy. Like how do you measure, like, and first of all, how do you define a broad network or a narrow network? Once you define like, okay, what are the performance measures to really measure, did you move from a broad to a narrow or a narrow to middle ground or not? So how helping um, creating tools with the use of data um, to, to, uh, to allow the evaluation of and optimization of this networks, I think, is at the center of what um, we are working on. And I would love to um, spend some time on. Um, the, the other the other thing is there's a lot of data in, in, in healthcare industry, right? I mean, it's, it, we are inundated with, with data, especially uh, patient-generated data is actually a new area that is um, has really taken taken shape recently. But but then. Um, no, no single data asset can really solve the problem. There is like, I mean, and then the, the challenge is all these data assets are siloed and how do we uh, make them communicate with each other? Like, how do we take claims data? How do we take network files? Combine them to create that solution. I think that is where um, there is a lot of value um, that we can drop. You know, um, the, this data thing is something that I'm, uh, uh, I'm, passionate about um i think that there's a very um important transition uh occurring in in the, in the network space which is around sort of insight and and sort of point of view around the service location and the provider at that location um and i think that there's this generational transition that's coming um there's no shortage of data uh, you, you know, you can buy data, you can build data, you can, you know, there's like tons of data. But like how we think about insight and how you think about insight in a way that's like useful, right? It, it's, I'm always, I always go back, I, I'm a, I tend to be a person who tries to think about the data and insight like at the point of application. Uh, I was taught a long time ago in the world of predictive analytics and modeling that that what you really want to do is you don't start with the model, you start with the point of use. You start with the spot, like who's going to, what's the question, what's the context? Um, and I'm always, the one I always go back to is an emergency room, three in the morning, someone presents like, what information do you really need to know to help that at that moment guide the the kind of the person in the in the the registrar or the right spot, that's the analytic. That's the insight. 
Yeah. So, so I think in a network space, I come back to this question of things like, I have somebody who's responsible for, for, for creating a network, whether it's a Medicare network or a QHP network or a behavioral network, like, like, and they have to think about which providers that are, they, they want to prioritize, how to think about, like, who do I want in the network? Who do I not want in the network? How many do I want? You mentioned broad and narrow. Like, so what sort of insight are you thinking about? Like, I, I like what information is going to really help that person at that point? Yeah, that's a great uh, question. So I, I'll, I'll give you an illustration here, like from the work that I did in my prior life and how that the, the perspective changed after coming to Quest, right? So um, uh, we were working on like um, reducing the spend on emergency department because that's one of the big line items for health, right? Uh, and even health class. And um, using longitudinal data, uh, we were able to develop predictive models that where we could say this member could end up in an ER uh, uh, in an emergency room in a three, six, nine, twelve month time frame, right? We could we could predict at that level of precision, um, and the models were great. And and mm -hmm. what we then did was we initiated care coordination measures, right? So okay, contact these these members and say like, hey, are you taking medication? Is your regimen to uh, um, as as expected or as prescribed? Um, or did you make even a primary care visit, right? So. So we did those kind of um, care card notions and hoping that um, the member will like kind of follow through and then we will avoid a, an ER visit. And it, the story ends there, right? But then right. coming to Quest, what it is, is like, I mean, there's a very important aspect of that chain um, that we are not looking at, which is, did the member really have access to primary care physician um, at the appointment wait times? Right. Uh, enough that uh, they can really go out. Do they have transportation uh, meets me, uh, that is necessary to visit the doctor um, uh, fulfilled, right? So we we don't look at it. So it actually underscores how holistic this approach should be. So even after all the effort that we did, well intended and really uh, spot on, like when the patient is gone, like we still may not have avoided some visits to VA. Right. <laughs> Interesting question. So, so, like, so here you are trying to think about how to activate members and sort of prevent bad. Do you ever pick up the phone or anyone ever pick up the phone and say, hey, our network's not sufficient. Our network's not, you know, there, we have problems with the network or gaps. Did you ever, like, did that call or email ever occur? No, I mean, never. Uh, that's why that's what we, we didn't think about network as a potential lever that we could pull to alleviate that visit, right? So it was more about clinical care coordination and member risk and um, treatment patterns. And so it was heavily on clinical side, but didn't really focus so much on the network. And that's why it said like coming to where this was like, aha, uh -huh, like um, this is what we were missing, right? So. Right. And so I had the, I was like exactly the same. I'm like, oh, I never actually thought about this as one of the tools. You said something a few minutes ago earlier about sort of the the administrative excess around like sort of these networks. Like, so I'm going to come back to that. Like, so talk to us, talk to me about a little bit. Like, like so, what what's in there? Because it's not a small number. What you just what I heard you talk about. Like, how, what 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 are you what are you getting at in that? So what we've seen in data is. When we look at, we, we created this measure called um, providers per thousand enrollments, right? So um, how many providers, if you have thousand members, um, say you need hundred PCPs to meet that thousand member needs, that's, let's say that's a median. And, and then we say, okay, how many of them are more than two times that median? So how many physicians, how many plans have PCPs that are more than 200? So these are like very broad types. So you, you have a lot more PCPs in there. And what we were looking for is, and, and what we realized is, cumulatively across the country for Medicare Advantage uh, contracts, we've seen there's, there's about 13 million excess um, providers that are in the network. Um, and what that translates to is, 
the health plan is incurring a lot of cost to maintain that for credentialing, data security, compliance. Like, I mean, there's, there's a laundry list of things when you have somebody on the network, provider data management, et cetera, et cetera, right? The, the amount of um, effort put in, in kind of checking all those boxes and the number of hours spent and the cost associated to that, cumulatively, that adds up to like about $15 million, $15 billion for the industry for the full year. And when you when you look at it on a per member per month basis, that's like thirty to forty bucks, which is not chunk change. Like that's a lot of money. So that, 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 that's pro- that's the profit for a lot of people, right? Like yeah, right, right, right. Like um, uh, you know the it, it, for all the money flowing through healthcare, um, the margins in a lot of places are really thin. Um, yeah, and, and so uh, it. So it's interesting. So I'm, uh, I when I first arrived, uh, I heard all these truisms. Like and I'm sure you've heard the same truisms. Like, oh, all of these sorts of payers, they've got all these huge networks, and these payers are always narrow network, or or this network is sort of you know it's all about editing the network as opposed to building new networks, etc. Um, and um, one of the truisms I heard a lot about was sort of this idea that. The network file that is sort of is sort of in in the compliance development box. It doesn't necessarily reflect a directory, and that there's sort of this gap between the two, which is sort of always struck me as a little odd. Um, and there's lots of reasons, I'm I, I'm sure, but like this broad this overly broad network thing is sort of I think at the tip of one of those conversations, like. If the network, if everyone's in the network, it is really hard to sort of control utilization. Um, uh, and w- one of the things that over the years I've I've come to believe, I, I spent a lot, of, I spent way too much time trying to think about how to get individuals to pay their bills, like motivate someone to pay their copay or deductible or everything else. What I've come to believe, and you mentioned it earlier, it's really complicated. And at a consumer level, it is really hard to understand and really navigate. You know, you know, it, it, it's easy to talk thematically and logic and everything else, but my experience has always has become that when I'm in the doctor's office and they, they're saying something and they tell you that, you know, you know, I had a skin issue and the doctor was like, this is what we're going to do about it. Like I didn't step back and say, well, is that going to be the most cost effective approach? Yeah. Or, you know, is this the right location? Um, I just did the, this doc who I've come to trust is sort of telling me to go over there and get on this table and I'm going to go. Um, and so the network, when it, you know, when the network is broad and everybody's in it, it is like, it's almost like allowing this massive sort of, you know, random chance game go un- unfold. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the solution isn't like getting into a narrow network mode either, right? I mean, because that, again, going back to my earlier uh, comment around, um, uh, it, it takes me 90 days to get to a cardiologist if it's an narrow network, especially with specialists, it becomes very common and, and I'm deferring my care and that deferred care, especially in the cardiac segment, like can lead to some very bad outcomes, right? So um, uh, what is that middle ground? Like, I mean, how do you really optimize your network so you, you are in that middle uh, land? I think that is, that, is the, that is the magic and it's both art and the science, I think, at this point. Right. So, right. so, so that's sort of, I, I'm taking from that, that's sort of where we're going, right? Like, if, and again, here at Quest, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about like, what, what's next on our journey? What's, what's next on the, on your kind of analytic journey here? Like what, if, if, if we're thinking about the network being too broad or being too narrow, like how, how do we, how do we want to think about like the measures of a good network? What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, so again, it starts with this, it starts with the right set of providers, right? So we, um, after you meet the 
adequacy standards that are required for compliance and you know right so that's kind of the baseline and do you really have providers that are delivering high quality care at low cost with least errors again you also have to keep check on the errors right right and this applies to both individual practitioners as well as institutional providers right um and and then the focus is on health equity health equity measures too right so do they have a good mix of female providers? Uh, do they have a good mix of non-English native speaking doctors? Is there a cultural competency among among doctors to meet the demographic needs of the population uh, they are catering to, right? And do they have uh, access to public transportation as we spoke earlier, right? So uh, because reaching shouldn't become a barrier, right? And, and what are the appointment wait times and especially services like cardiology, like we talked about. So after checking all these, the other interesting challenge I think we will have to address here is um, um, seldom health plans contract at an individual physician level. So we, we also have to understand uh, what are the contracting practices in the market and how physicians actually contract together. Like is it the 10 physicians or is it this, this physician that they sent this institution? So understanding those contracting um, dynamics is also going to be important. So once you put all of these um, data points, again, then it's a matter of stitching them together to, to recommend like, okay, what is the ideal, that middle network, not broad, not narrow, but checks all the boxes that I just talked about. Um, how how can how can health plans devise a plan to have the network that meets all these all these requirements? So that yeah yeah you're you're it's interesting your uh, contracting entity thing. I I've always that was one of my sort of things that I sort of have underappreciated was there's a game of Tetris that's being played. Like you remember that old video game like the little shape falling and you have to create lines like like these these Providers don't come in neat little squares. They come in yeah. cubes and odd L shapes and T shapes. And, you know, unlike in Tetris, where like the shape that's falling is all one color, you know, in, in healthcare. So I'm in a market. I've got, you know, there are four health systems. Each health system has, you know, three facilities and a bunch of outpatients. Instead, they've all got a cardiac program, they've all got a, a cancer program. They've all got sort of a basic maternity. One of them's got a NICU. One doesn't like. Oh, and each of those lines of business or sort of service lines can have different efficacy. So, like one health system may be the best cardiology program, but they may be the worst in oncology. Yeah. And so, thinking about like how these Tetris blocks fit together to be compliant, which is what I heard you talk about before, and then to create appropriate equity you know, ser service level. And finally, to um, think about the the sort of overall sort of efficiency, because you have to build the network thinking about the way you're going to manage the patient threat. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not easy. Yeah, yeah, that's not easy. And, and, and um, of course, it, and to your point earlier, like, the network needs to be marketable, right? So like, you know, in certain markets, there's a big brand. And if you don't have the brand in the network, regardless of their efficiency and effectiveness, nobody wants to be in that, in that, you know, nobody wants the product that doesn't have the marquee academic medical center. Uh, and so there's a marketability piece to this. So um, have you figured out like sort of a way to start thinking about the problem or is, or, or is that going to be the, our, our next our next podcast? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. our, our thinking um, has to mature further, but we are definitely uh, in in this. We have a lot of innovative uh, ideas of how we want to address this. Um, I think next podcast is probably a good place to kind of maybe roll some of those things out. But one thing I'll say um, mm -hmm. It's not an easy problem to solve, like anything in healthcare. Um, at the same time, um, we don't want to do like analysis paralysis more, nor do we want to like throw a bunch of data at health plans and doctors. Right. Right. So, so how do you how do you get to that middle middle ground? 
Um, and this is where the, the innovation comes into play. And I'm I'm pretty optimistic. I think we have all the all the ingredients, like yes, uh, I mean, like of, of the meal, like right. I mean, if you want to put this in a, in a meal context, we have to like put them in right proportions and and make it really tasty, palatable for the health plans to like take in. So there is less effort on their end um, to actually uh, execute on a on a plan of network optimization. That's where I think the focus area is. Yeah, I you know it's funny. I I'm I'm in huge in the something be better than nothing you can't we can't just throw stuff over the wall and say tell us how it worked so uh, there's a sort of an 80 20 game we're gonna have to play which is we can get some stuff out that can solve and help 80 percent it's gonna leave some problems on the margin um but problems on the margin are much better than sort of like the whole thing all right uh, Subhashra, I think on that, we should leave it for our, until our next, po- and we'll come back in a couple of, you know, some time frame, whether it's weeks or months, and we'll maybe we'll talk about sort of some of those early tools and how we're thinking about it. So, yeah. Thank you. Welcome to the world of networks. Who knew? It was so exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I'm very optimistic about the solution in our field. So that, that's great. Thank you for um, talking to me. It's great. Okay. So a couple quick takeaways from what we just heard. One, Nobody knew the lens of the network or the opportunity the network presented until they came here to Quest Analytics, where we all have learned that the network is foundational to the access of care and to the organizations and payers that built them. So Steve, Subash, thank you so much for that valued conversation. And thank you all for watching and listening. We know you have a million things that you can do instead of watching podcasts all day long, but we're glad you spent the time with us. Uh, If you liked what you saw today, uh, if you liked what you heard, then please write some comments into the comment line. Give us a five on Spotify. All your comments and ratings, they really do help. Um, And if you have any ideas for any future topics or shows, uh, send them to me on LinkedIn, or you can also email us at socialmedia at questanalytics.com. If you'd like to learn more about what Quest Analytics does, I also invite you to visit our website at questanalytics.com. Remember, we produce this show for you. Thank you again for watching. And the Totally Adequate podcast is produced by Fowler House Films and Quest Analytics. Thanks again.